Hi, and welcome to Sea Watchhorn Studios. We are going to be doing an acrylic painting. Uh, this one is perfect for kids, but you know what? Adults can totally follow along and do this as well. Uh, we are doing a cat in the tree with cherry blossoms. Uh, your background and your tree leaf choices, there's many, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. First thing I want, uh, if you bought my kit, then you have you have these little cups, you have black and white, and you have all three primary colors. It's a great idea because you're not gonna use all of this in one painting uh, to get a plate and lay it out just like I've done here. Uh, that way you have a great spot in between to mix your colors. So go ahead and make sure you have that. You're also gonna want a large and a small paintbrush, which if you bought a kit, you're gonna have. You want paper towel and you want some kind of a container with water. Uh, make sure if you're, because you won't be on an easel, you'll probably be flat. Make sure your paper towel and your water are side by side. You don't want to be dripping over your painting to dry off your paintbrush, okay? Uh, so you're going to have your paint laid out in a plate uh, and you can put the lids back on, put those back for a second painting if you want. Uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to take our large brush and we're going to make some colors. Now, what I want to do really quickly for you guys is demonstrate the color choices that you have available to you. I'm going to show you what they look like. This is a good time just to watch. Don't start mixing a bunch of colors. Uh, when you are ready, you're going to dip your brush in the water just so that it's a little bit wet. Now I'm going to just quickly demonstrate some of the colors. So first color I'm going to demonstrate is going to be a dark blue. So whichever color you choose to start your painting off, make sure it's dark. You don't add any white to this color yet, okay? So I'm going to take a little bit of the blue, put it in between. I'm going to take a little, little, little tap of black. You don't want to take too much. I'm going to give it a little stir and look at that. So you're going to get a beautiful <clears throat> dark navy blue. Look at that. So it's quite a difference. And this one here is going to be gorgeous. Okay, now I have to wash my brush. You will not, <laughs> but I'm going to wash that color off. I'm going to show you a nice dark deep red. So I'm going to take a little bit of red. Same thing, just a little tap of black, don't overdo it. And I'm gonna give it a little stir and you get yourself a really nice, deep, beautiful red. Isn't that pretty? I love that color. So there's a nice, deep red. Now again, I gotta wash my brush, you will not. Okay, now yellow is the one color I'm not gonna allow you to use because it's too light. It doesn't work for a night painting. Uh, you could make orange and that you would take some red and a little bit of yellow. Okay, now the yellow doesn't turn it very quickly. So there we go, there we are. So that's a nice dark orange. I probably wouldn't make it too much lighter than that again, because you want this to be the darkest shade in your sky. So that's a really pretty shade of orange if you want to go with an orange. Now there's a couple more colors here. So purple, if you want to do purple, you're going to take equal amounts of red and blue like that. Give it a little stir. There you go. You've got yourself a really pretty deep dark purple. Now if you add a little more red it'll turn more raspberry. If you add a little more blue it'll turn more royal. That's really it. So if I add a little more red, look at that. That's one of my favorite shades right there. All right and we've got one more to show you and that is going to be blue and yellow. So if you take just a little bit of yellow, you'll get a teal. And if you take a little bit more, you'll start getting a green. Both would be beautiful. Look at that. So these are your color options. All right. I want you to pause the video and I want you to decide and mix your color. You need about the amount of a quarter. Okay. So probably in the end, it'll look like that size right there. Okay. So this is where you're going to pause and make your, your color. All right, so I'm just gonna go with the blue. That was my choice here. I've added a little bit of black and I've got myself about a quarter size worth. And my brush is really loaded because I just mixed the color, which is perfect. That's what we want. Now we're gonna get right into painting. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a circle. Now I want you to make this circle a little bigger than you think, okay? So if you, let's say, want your moon to be about the size of your fist, I want you to go double around that. So I'm gonna go like this. I make a nice big giant circle. Now don't overthink it. It's not about perfection. 
Just go around once you're kind of happy with the shape. Again, don't overthink it. That's perfect. You're gonna go around a couple of times now. So it's about how many fingers? Maybe three fingers, okay? If you're a real little person, it might be four fingers, but I'm gonna say about three, okay? And I'm gonna go all the way around like this. Perfect. Now, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna keep that lovely color on there and I'm gonna dip right into the white and I'm gonna go right up to that line. Now here's the trick with blending colors like this. One, lots of paint on your brush. If you don't have enough paint on your brush, it's not gonna work, okay? So you're gonna go like this and go right into the dark. See how that blends? Now what you want is all that awesome streakiness. You don't wanna blend it so much that you lose those streaks. The streaks are actually what make it look interesting. The only thing is you want those streaks to still follow that kind of circular pattern. Like you don't want one of your streaks to go like this. That doesn't feel right at all. You wanna make sure they kind of still follow a little bit of a circular pattern. And you're gonna go right to the middle like that. Real easy peasy, done. Okay, there we go. So the middle's done. It's blended enough for my liking. I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna pick up a little white again. I'm gonna do the same thing on the outer edge like this. So we're creating this cool kind of ring around the moon. There we go. And by the way, you don't have to put your circle over off to the side. If you wanna make it in the center, you can. Typically, it's you, you don't wanna make your focal point dead center, but if you really want to, it's your painting. You put your moon where you want it. So I'm gonna go about the same amount with the light. There we go. Look at that. And you just keep going until you're happy with how it blends. You don't want it to look like a bullseye. So you wanna make sure that you are overlapping those edges, okay? You don't wanna have it real harsh lines. There we go. Look at that. Now, real easy, I'm gonna go right back into my dark color, which I am almost out of. I did not make enough. So I'm just gonna take a little more blue, take a little bit more here real quick and you might find you run out too this is all you got to do make a little more all right now this color is going to take you right to the edge of your canvas so here we go this will be a very simple way to finish off your sky now for you guys i want you to wrap it around the edges so you're going to anytime you touch an edge you're going to wrap it around the top sides bottom Get it nice all the way around. That way when you hang it on the wall, it looks really good from all angles, okay? okay remember, you wanna blend that line a little bit. You don't want it to look too much like a bullseye. There we go. All the way across. Perfect. And remember, it's those streaks that make it interesting. So don't blend them all the way. If you have some cool streaks in there, Keep them, that is awesome. Streaking on a canvas is good. <laughs> I'm gonna just tip it to the side so I can get to the bottom. Now I am gonna paint really fast in this video. Uh, you should pause this video at any time you're feeling like I'm going too fast for you. Uh, I'm just going super fast so that this video isn't an hour long. Uh, but please, there's many times where I want you to pause it and take your time and enjoy this process. Don't rush like I'm doing. All right, so the background is done. Uh, this is a great time to take a little break. Uh, go get a drink of water, bathroom break, whatever. Uh, we want this to kind of dry a little bit. And then when you come back, we're going to plunk in our moon. So wash your brush before your break and then go take it. Okay, welcome back from your break. Uh, next, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna stick with my big brush. I'm gonna get right into the plain white and I'm gonna put in my moon. Now, again, don't worry too much about a perfect circle. They can be really difficult. Uh, just focus on getting it in the center of your glow. That'll be more important. So I'm gonna go like this, just take my, my brush, don't overthink it, straight white and just, kind of glue that white on. 
it will pick up some of the color from underneath, which is perfect. That's what you want. The moon is never totally just white, is it? I don't think so. So I'm going to go like this. And that's probably good enough. I'm happy with that. Again, it's not about perfection, right? I think I've got a good enough circle. I'm happy with it. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush. Now, for some of you, you might decide you want to switch to your small brush for the branches. I'm going to actually stick with my large brush for the big limbs. I'll probably go to my small brush for the branches, the little tiny ones after. Um, so we're going to just quickly talk about branches. There's a couple of little things that uh, I've noticed people commonly make mistakes uh, doing. And number one is they make the branch too thick and then they forget that it's got to get thinner and thinner and thinner. So the branch ends up being very thick all the way across. Um, obviously you want to start thicker closest to where the tree is and get thinner as the further away you get. So I'm going to show you a little trick that I do to get that to happen. So I'm going to use my large brush still, but again, if you want to switch to your small brush, you can. I'm going to go straight black paint. So I have lots of my brush. That's another thing. You don't want to uh, not have enough paint on your brush because then you got to push hard and then things get thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure now this branch is going to be the one my cat's going to sit on. So I'm going to put it up a little bit higher so he's going to be up in the moon. And I'm going to start with just the top of my branch. Okay, so I'm going to go like this and go like that. And I kind of like that whimsical feel where the branches are going around the moon. So that's what I'm going to do. Now that's just the top of my branch, okay? Now I know it's got to be thicker here and get thinner there. So I'm going to follow my branch. See how I'm slowly getting closer and closer and closer? Look at that. There you go. Okay? That's, a, that's really important. You don't want to get this thick all the way out to here and then cut it off. That doesn't feel very natural, right? So we're going to draw that one in. Once we're happy with it, you're going to take that black paint and you're just going to fill it in really carefully. You want to be nice and neat and tidy with this like that. There we go. So there's my one branch. Now I'm going to do at least three, I think. I think that would be nice. So I want one for sure that kind of goes around the moon. So I'm going to do this. Now this will end up probably being the bottom of this branch. Lots of paint. Come around. Look at that. And then it's going to be thicker here. And come around. Now, depending on the what look you want, you don't have to be maybe as whimsical. You don't have to curve them around as much as I am. Uh, you could do them a little straighter if you want. It's your branch, your world, your painting. You do what you're comfortable with. There we go. I like that. And now I'm going to add a couple more. These ones won't be quite as big. So I'm going to go up here, or I just want to be a little bit thinner here. Now the nice thing about this painting is if you do a branch or a limb that you don't love or it's too thick, oh, we're just going to put some, some of these lovely cherry blossoms over it. We'll just cover them right up so you don't have to overthink it too much. I think that's probably good. I'm going to do some thinner ones, I think, down here. but. I think for big branches, that's going to be good. Now, again, this could be where you decide to switch your small brush for the little tiny branches. Again, I'm just going to use my large brush just because I know it works for me. Okay. Now, the one place I don't want to put any branches is where I'm going to put my cat. Okay. I can always tuck some in after, but I don't want to have branches cutting right through where my cat's going to go. And I think in this one, I'm going to put the cat right there. So I'm going to start with branches. Now, here's a couple of tricks about branches. Uh, make sure that they're going the direction that the limb is going. We have a, sometimes we make them go straight down at all these odd angles. That's not what they do. They're going to grow along with the branch. Okay, so really pay attention to that. If your branch is curving, your branch, your little, or if your limb is curving, your little branches are curving with it. Okay, so keep that in mind. So I'm going to throw in a few. So you're going to go out like this, and I always like to say it's like lowercase y. So there's a lowercase y, okay, and I can thicken it up closer to the tree. That's as simple as it is. Do another one here. There's a lowercase y. Done. Thicken it up closer to the tree. So I'm just going to keep doing this. Now I always do the lowercase y's first, 
And then afterwards, if I decide that it needs maybe another little bit, I'll add more. But for the most part, we tend to overdo branches. So just stick with lowercase y's for now, okay? So I'm gonna go like this, add a couple here, lowercase y, going off. Let's see, I don't wanna leave that space for now. Now again, this is where you can add some down here. Just look at that, you can really start to fill in. Remember in the real world, branches crisscross a little bit. So don't be afraid to have that happen. Okay. Well, my, my brush is getting a little bit wide here, but that's okay. It's not, not a problem. So here's all my lowercase y's. Again, you can put in as many as you want or as few. I'm just gonna throw a few more in here. And again, if you get a thick one like that, don't worry about it. That's just real life. It happens. If all of yours end up thick, hey, it's your style. That's okay too. Nothing wrong with that. All right, so I'm gonna go with this. This is how many I'm gonna do. Now this is where I can go back in and say which ones need a third, okay? So again, you don't wanna overdo it. I'm gonna say, okay, these are actually fine. Maybe a third one there, maybe one here, okay? Just very carefully choose where you might wanna add just another little branch here and there. There, there, this one could use it, this one could use it. There you go, see what a difference that makes? Just adding one more to some of them, that's all it takes. There you go. I think I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave it. Now, uh, give your brush a rinse. We're gonna let this dry just again for a second. So you're gonna take another little break um, and we'll come back and we're gonna put in our cat and our leaves. Okay, welcome back from your little break. Uh, now we're gonna get to the fun stuff. We're gonna put in our cats. Now, if you don't wanna do a cat, uh, I could also demonstrate a little bird. That might be fun as well. And if you don't wanna add any animal, that's your choice as well. So uh, I'll demonstrate a couple of things for you, but your choice on what you wanna do. Uh, I will demonstrate the cat first. So I'm gonna to switch to my small brush now because uh, it's a kind of a detail thing. The way I like to start cats, now I don't do a lot of animals for a reason because I'm not great at them. So I like to make them very simple and, and often simple is best. So what I'm gonna do is I do want the cat's head to kind of be in the moon. So I'm gonna start with the body and I love to do uh, this kind of a very fat bottom teardrop kind of shape. So I'm gonna go like this, come down. Calm down. So it's like a big teardrop where the bottom part right here on the branch is the fat part. See that? Love that. Now, this is how you're going to start your cat. Okay. Actually, you're going to start your bird the same way. So how interesting is that? Now, on either side of the cat, you can go like this and you could just put like a little, little line like that. And that's just his little haunches, we'll call it. Looks like a chicken right now. There we go. Now his tail, I'm gonna come down and you can do whatever you want. You could do a little swirly tail like that if you want. I like that. There you go. Now his head goes right up here and I like to kind of make it a little bit cartoony. So I'm gonna kind of do like a rectangle shape like this. And then I like to just thicken up the neck a little bit. There we go, so kind of a rectangle shape, like that, flat top, okay? Now what you're gonna do is two little triangles right up top. It's amazing how that turns it into a cat really quick. Look at that. And there you go, you cut yourself a little silhouette of a cat. If you really want, you can thin out your brush. You can add a couple little whiskers like that. You don't have to, but you can. Look at that, whoa, that one went crazy. Give me a little extra long one there. <laughs> that one's a little crazy. There we go. Hey, that's real life. It happens. So there's your cat. He's actually kind of cute, I like him. Now, if you want to do a bird, very similar. 
I'll do a little bird sitting beside him. You're gonna do a little fat bottom teardrop once again, like that. Now for the tail, it just comes down into like a little V. You might not even see it. There you go. Now the head is just a little round shape on top, like that. Very simple. And then, depending what you want him to be looking at, you want him to look at the cat, you could put his beak here. If you want him to look up at the moon like the cat's doing, you could put his little beak, little triangle, like that. Look at that, isn't that cute? So you've got yourself a little bird looking up at the moon. That's kind of cute, they're buddies. So there you go, there's a couple of options for you. You don't have to do any of them, or you can do both. All right. Fun part, we're gonna get those Q-tips out. I know you're wondering why on earth I packed you Q-tips in your kit, this is why. Uh, you can choose whatever color you want for your uh, cherry blossoms. I did do pink and red for that one. Uh, once again, you wanna have a dark and a light. So if you're gonna do purple or you're gonna do red or you're gonna do blue, whatever color you want for those cherry blossoms, you'll need to mix the dark one first. Okay, so um, in mine, I think, I think I'll do purple and I actually have a dark purple already right here so I'm gonna just dip all three so the best way I like to do this now it might be tricky for little hands but I like to squeeze it together and then I actually like to push it against my finger like that so it doesn't move as much okay so that's kind of what I like to do I got pottery still on my hands <laughs> looks bad so I'm just gonna make my purple I'm gonna dip them in like that get them nice and full and this is the best part. We're gonna start tapping nice and loose like that. Now I just realized I don't have enough, so I'm gonna to have to just do red, I guess. There we go. And we're just gonna start tapping. Now you do wanna put them where the branches are, but you know what? We don't have to just stick to the branches. We could pretend there's a branch we can't see over here. Throw some in over there. Why not, right? We could throw some up over here. There we go. So you can work around your cat and your bird if you want. Tap around here. Now you don't have to watch me do all of the leaves. When we come back, you'll see I'm starting on my second color. Welcome back. We want to make a lighter version now of that color you were just using. So. Uh, often just dipping your Q-tips right in the white is all it takes. Uh, let's just test it and see. Yep, it's perfect. Now this is adding a little highlight. Look at that, isn't that pretty? So this is actually what's gonna make it look like flowers, blossoms, that little two-tone effect that you get is so pretty. Now you're not covering everything you just did. You're just accentuating it. Does that make sense? You're just making it pop. So we're just gonna go like that. It's nice to have a few falling. Look at that, because maybe it's got a little breeze. And just tap away. We're gonna just highlight all of this. Look at that, this is my favorite part. It's kind of the finishing touches that make it all look, look beautiful. Now some color ideas. If you went with a teal or a green, purple would be a beautiful accent color, wouldn't it? That would be really fun. Uh, if you went with purple, I do like the pink with the purple, but I guess you could try light green, why not? That would be fun. The whole point is to make it your own painting. Now look at that. I think I'm almost done with my blossoms. Isn't that beautiful? I think, I think I'm done. What do you think? Now, if you have a lot of room left over and you want to add a few more petals falling, you can do that. Uh, you could also, let's say you have a lot of room and you wanna put like little uh, stars, you could take the back side of the brush, just dip it right into the white, and you could throw a little twinkling stars, maybe these are petals, and you could just go around. Now, obviously, if you put them over your tree or your leaves, well, then they're not gonna be stars look at that just adds a little fun touch peeking out from the background like there perfect i think i am happy with that i hope you had fun 
I hope that your paintings turned out. Please send me pictures. I'd love to see how they came out. Uh, if you have any questions, give me a, a, an email or a message and I'll be more than happy to, to help walk you through it. Uh, have fun with this painting. Can't wait to see pictures of them. Thank you.